chance or design. These snails over here, every single one of them was classified as a different species in the past. Today we know that one species, just different genes expressed at different times. Butterflies come with different shapes and sizes and colors in different seasons. Same species, different genes activated. Where did those genes come from? So you can have one butterfly of the same, same kind, looking like this one season and like that one season. Where they come from? Boom, little house or design. That's your probability. This creature over there, this pigeon, built-in variety is massive to small, dark to light, strange to weird, all shapes and sizes, built-in variety. This beetle, black to white to large to small, this beetle, black to white, to large, to small, one species, the quagga. Today, we know that this quagga, which is an extinct animal, is actually not extinct at all. They found a pelt in the museum, and they found some blood vessels, sent it to the United States, did DNA analysis, and they found that the DNA is identical to the plains zebra living today. So they started a breeding program, and they're breeding the quagga back. Was it extinct? Yes or no? No. It just was a different gene expression. If you take this ladybird, it's black in the spring and it's got the red and white and the red and black uh, structure in the fall. Two species or one species? One species. Different sets of genes. All of these are one kind. If you take the pocket mouse, white in a snowy background, dark, on a rock background. Genes that oscillate from white rabbit in the winter to dark rabbit in the summer. Different expressions of the genetic potential in that animal. Also mountain lizards to coastal lizards. All these changes. We're dealing with genes. Boom little house, boom little house, boom little house or design. That's your choice. Anything that changes the genotype to give more variety must also come about by chance. And the process that is used is fertilization. So there we have it. Fertilization. Two creatures producing offspring by mixing their genes. Now I want you to think about it. Just shake your heads. <laughs> Wake up. Are you awake? All right, think. Natural selection works on what is there. Is that right? The babies have to be there. The children have to be running around. Question. Reproduction increases the variety. But natural selection only works once the babies of this process have been produced. So how did sexual reproduction, which just mixes genes, that's like rewriting the book a little bit, how did it come into existence? You have two choices. Chance or design. Now it's getting really phenomenally amazing. To run this by you, we have 46 chromosomes, is that right? Yeah. 23 are from dad, 23 are from mom. They go and lie in homologous pairs like that. And during meiosis, the one can go this one, the other one can go that one, or the other way around. We call that random sorting. Just from that, I can get 2 to the power of 23 times 2 to the power of 23. That's 80 trillion different offspring. Can you imagine that? I can produce 80 trillion different children just from that process. Wow! Now, that's not enough. I can split them up like this into chromatids and then they actually swap material. Now, this is all happening at the level of the what? Genotype. Alright, now what happens here? So I can take a little bit of dad and I can swap it with a little bit of mom and I can switch them over. So this one over here is then all dad, dad mom, mom dad, mom. And I can start jumbling the genes and I can do it all over the chromosome so that it looks like this. And by the way, this works like a precision machine. It is mind-bogglingly complicated. There are enzymes which twist the molecule. There are enzymes which run along it, which cut it in exactly the right space so that when you cross the genes over, you don't make a mistake. You cut one letter too far,
the next gene reads, ha ta 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 at. So it's got to be precise. Boom! Clockwork. Otherwise you're going to have jumbled up kids, I'll tell you that. They wouldn't know whether they're Arthur or Martha. And all this mechanism, this complex mechanism, does nothing but increase the variety. How did it come into existence? Chance or design? Now let me tell you something. If you thought sending a man to the moon was a great feat, this is 10 million billion times more complicated than anything like that. If I had to tell you that rocket that took the people to the moon successfully and, the, and the, the one that landed, plus all the stuff that went along with it, wow, that that came about by chance, they'd lock me up. <laughs> but this is more complicated than that. There may not be one mistake or else each one of you would have been a cabbage. <laughs> and yet we must believe it came about by chance. You're welcome to believe it. I have no problem with it. But I just wanted you to realize what you're dealing with. So here we have a cave fish. Can you see that it doesn't have eyes? It's a new species. It doesn't have eyes. Let me tell you something. I think it has the genes for eyes, but being a cave fish it doesn't need them. So the genes are what? Switched off. Deactivated. If you go to Hawaii, you will find that very quickly after a new cave system or something forms in those volcanic islands, that the cockroaches move into the dark caves. And within a few generations, none of them have eyes. Do you think that's evolution or do you think it's just deactivating the genes? It's just deactivating the genes. Look at this creature over here. These are flightless birds. We find flightless rails, we find flightless cormorants, we find flightless anything on islands. The genes are deactivated very quickly. This chicken over here is the next of the brand that will be used by plen plucky plied chicken because it doesn't have any feathers so it doesn't take any plucking. Now that could be a mutation or it could be a deactivation of genes. In some cases you can mix species like this is a lep jag, that is a liger, a mixture between a lion and a tiger. This one over here is a wolfen, a mixture between a whale and a dolphin. This one is a zos, a mixture between a, a zebra and a horse. This one is a zonkey, it's a different mixture between a zebra and a donkey. Of course, you will say their offspring is not viable. But you get fish that do that and it's viable. You get insects that do that and it's viable. And maybe there's a link here to the past. This one over here is a chimera. This is a mixture between a sheep and a goat. But because they don't sexually mix, they actually take the cell of an embryo of each, put them together, put them into a surrogate mother, and this part over here on the right over there develops as a goat. This piece over here develops as a sheep. That is a goat. That is a sheep. What's going on in the head, nobody knows. <laughs> and I always have a little joke for you, and that is, when the Lord comes to separate the sheep from the goats, I'd hate to be this guy. <laughs> That'll be an explosive experience, right? Okay, let's talk about other things. So, when you get something changing, does that necessarily mean it's evolution or could it be switching off available information? It could be. Now, our, all our genes are on chromosomes and sometimes you can get chromosomes to actually join up. Like here you have a tandem fusion, you have a chromosome, and you have a small chromosome, which we call an acrosomic chromosome, and they link up. Oops. Then I have a long chromosome. But the information is exactly the same from banding studies. Can you see that? Have I changed the information? No. I've just changed the way in which it's going to separate. And now, this animal here is the largest antelope in the world. It's the elant, and it has one of those. The chromosomes are fused together. And please notice that it has stripes along its side, and that it has twirled horns. This one over here is the kudu. It has stripes, and it has twirled horns. This one over here is the lesser kudu. It has stripes. The male has similar horns. This one over here is the nyala, female, she doesn't have horns. There's the male nyala, it has stripes, it has horns. This one over here is the bongo, 
it has the same fusions, it has stripes, it has the same twirled horns. This one over here is a small little antelope, it's called the 